Thank you very much. As it happens, the story of Joshua in Jericho is the subject of an interesting experiment in child morality by the Israeli psychologist George Tamarin. Tamarin presented to more than a thousand Israeli schoolchildren aged between 8 and 14 the book of Joshua's account of the Battle of Jericho. He then asked the children a simple moral question. Do you think Joshua and the Israelites acted rightly or not? They had to choose between A, total approval, B, partial approval, and C, total disapproval. The results were polarized. 66% gave total approval and 26% total disapproval, with rather fewer 8% in the middle with partial approval. Here are three typical answers from the total approval A group. In my opinion, Joshua and the sons of Israel acted well. And here are the reasons. God promised them this land and gave them permission to conquer. If they would not have acted in this manner or killed anyone, then there would be the danger that the sons of Israel would have assimilated among the Goyim. In my opinion, Joshua was right when he did it, one reason being that God commanded him to exterminate the people so that the tribes of Israel will not be able to assimilate amongst them and learn their bad ways. Joshua did good because the people who inhabited the land were of a different religion. And when Joshua killed them, he wiped their religion from the earth. The justification for the genocidal massacre by Joshua is religious in every case. Even those in category C who gave total disapproval did so in some cases for backhanded religious reasons. One girl, for example, disapproved of Joshua's conquering Jericho because in order to do so, he had to enter it. I think it is bad since the Arabs are impure, and if one enters an impure land, one will also become impure and share their curse. Tamarin ran a fascinating control group in his experiment. A different group of 168 Israeli children were given the same text from the book of Joshua, but with Joshua's own name replaced by General Lin and Israel replaced by a Chinese kingdom 3,000 years ago. Now the experiment gave opposite results. Only 7% approved of General Lin's behavior and 75% disapproved. In other words, when their loyalty to Judaism was removed from the calculation, the majority of the children agreed with the moral judgments that most modern humans would share. Joshua's action was a deed of barbaric genocide. But it all looks different from a religious point of view. And the difference starts early in life. It was religion that made the difference between the children condemning genocide and condoning it. Do those people who hold up the Bible as an inspiration to moral rectitude have the slightest notion of what is actually written in it? The following offences merit the death penalty according to Leviticus 20. Cursing your parents, committing adultery, making love to your stepmother or your daughter-in-law, homosexuality, marrying a woman and her daughter, bestiality, and to add injury to insult, the unfortunate beast is to be killed too. You also get executed, of course, for working on the Sabbath. The point is made again and again throughout the Old Testament. In Numbers 15, the children of Israel found a man in the wilderness gathering sticks on the forbidden day. They arrested him and then asked God what to do with him. As it turned out, God was in no mood for half measures that day. And the Lord said unto Moses, the man shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. And all the congregation brought him without the camp and stoned him with stones, and he died. Did this harmless gatherer of firewood have a wife and children to grieve for him? Did he whimper with fear as the first stones flew and scream with pain as the fusillade crashed into his head? What shocks me today about such stories is not that they really happened, they probably didn't. What makes my jaw drop is that people today should base their lives on such an appalling role model as Yahweh, and even worse, that they should bossily try to force the same evil monster, whether fact or fiction, on the rest of us.